What most people don't know is that the whole field started at the community level. There were people who started calling themselves peace builders and what they were doing was building peace across the lines of conflict. As the field grew, institutions were built to create graduates in this field. Then they went on and created more institutions and civil society organizations, and they were hired by the United Nations. The UN has popularized the field of peace building and is now funding many great programs. It's concerning now that there's this idea that local civil society are implementing partners rather than the creators of their own programs. And places like the University of Notre Dame, I think are here to remind people of this long history. And we have to remind people this is a fundamentally local endeavor that you do not need a graduate degree in order to be a peace builder. The highlight for me is seeing the number of practitioners and the diversity of people at the conference. And I guess that's partially because it's at Croc and it has more connection to the practice and more of a commitment really, I think, to bring the theory and the practice together. Certainly even in the regional diversity, the national diversity, the group of people they've been able to bring together is really quite impressive. But also the fact that that diverse group of people have been addressing in many different ways some of the most critical questions today, but from different perspectives. And that's the important thing. It's not all academics talking about one thing or all practitioners talking about one thing. When I was doing my own peace studies here close to 15 years ago, the passion for peace studies was there, but not as pronounced as it is today. We've seen more dialogue between the practitioners and people within the peace studies. We've seen even cutting edge research emerging today within the peace studies, bringing in peace engineering, looking into the whole issue of digital peace building and diverse perspectives that I've really seen emerge. That's to me the great highlight. It's as though there's a moment of hope. But at the same time, though we've made major strides in the last 40 years, but we are almost losing them by the kind of rhetoric that we are seeing in political leadership across continents, with the very divisive kind of politics that really has been rather discouraging, but we are soldiering on as peace practitioners and scholars in peace studies. Of the examples we've seen recently from Sudan on how the regime was brought down just by women and men who are very simple and just wanted some respect and dignity. There's a clear message that militarized peace building cannot work and that we need to be thinking of nonviolent approaches, dialogue, negotiation. And governments are beginning to listen. Even militarized structures are beginning to listen to that. The biggest takeaway for me is the need to be strategic. To resolve the challenges the world is facing requires a strategic thinking and strategic action. The conference was designed in a way to create the conversations between scholars and practitioners who try to address these uh, major challenges. The Kroc Institute is one of the largest centers for the study of violence and the strategies for peace. And it was important for us to use this leadership position in order to invite scholars and practitioners to come here and engage in this conversation. We felt that this needs to be part of our strategic planning for the next five years. We wanted to create a place for interdisciplinary conversation between scholars and uh, practitioners to showcase the work of Kroc but also to provide the opportunity for others in the field, scholars and practitioners, to come here and engage in this very rich conversation with us. One of the things that I really enjoyed was a panel looking at youth, youth participation in politics. There was a lot of discussion about the way in which young people are being considered from two different directions by sort of global national policy makers at the moment. On the one hand, they're a resource, they're an opportunity, you know, they've got loads of energy, they've got loads of ideas. But there is also this sense that young people are a threat and a problem. Looking at this idea that we're headed into an uncertain future and that young people are going to have to live with that uncertain future for much longer than people like me are. <laughs> And yet, at the same time, older people are casting younger people as the problem instead of thinking about the fact that perhaps actually the older generation is a problem for the younger generation. We need to be thinking very differently about that dynamic. And I think what's been great about this conference is that the practitioners have come in from all over the world. I mean, the other problem with peace studies and with academic scholarship is that it can be a very Western, you know, North American, European kind of bubble. When we get practitioners in coming from Latin America, Africa, Asia, and that's just so important in terms of getting a diversity of voices in our field.